Recently I had the opportunity to interview a friend of mine back from the time when I was a monk in Myanmar. Uh, his name is Bhikkhu Subuti. And we, I had the chance to ask him about his experience going on alms round in Hawaii, which is where he lives now. Bhikkhu Subuti, he's been a monk for many years now. A number of years back, he moved to the United States where the culture is quite different, the lifestyle is different, the community awareness of monastic lifestyle is quite different. So I wanted to ask him about his views and experiences of what it's like to find his basic necessities such as food in America because back in Asia um, it's normal for a monk to go on an alms round and receive food from the villages from the villagers and I knew that he still to this day goes to receive his food from people in the community that's his preferred method of receiving food he also doesn't use money. So here's that interview. I look forward to interviewing him again on many topics relating to his lifestyle, which I find fascinating and very inspiring. So here it is. Have a look. I heard some monks say that that because we are living in 2019 in America, not in Asia, where people are familiar with uh, Buddhist traditions and culture, uh, that it's more appropriate in America or in Europe to have the lay supporters basically come to the monastery or temple and offer food and also, rather than, for example, going to Pindapat for alms round in the village mm -hmm. or on the streets like they do in Asia, where people are also familiar with that tradition, they say because that tradition doesn't exist in the West, um, people will look at you weird and it's more dangerous and you're just going to end up going hungry and that's not really the point of the rules that the Buddha wasn't out there to make life difficult for monks. I'm just, I'm curious how you would what, what are your views on that? Okay, well, um, it's not so bad if, if uh, donors want to bring food for the monks. Um, that's not so much a problem. Uh, what, end, what ends up happening is actually they end up giving money and a stockpile of food to the monks and they ended up buying their own food and they end up cooking their own food. And, um, you know, it's basically, um, you know, it, you allow the donors not to have enough time to take care of you. The monks should always be taken care of. This is uh, very important. So I'm in Kauai right now, okay? I'm not even in uh, Burma or Myanmar or Sri Lanka or Thailand or whatever. And, uh, yeah, they don't know what I'm doing. And the question is, can I get food? Can I get food uh, from the people? Well, I've been doing this for about one year, and sometimes I get enough food. Sometimes I don't actually get enough food. I get supplementals um, through either a subway. Uh, they, some people, they send... Uh, Subway tickets to me, and uh, um, actually they're stored at Subway themselves. I don't even like to collect the tickets, so I um, uh, they I give them the store number, and they send me uh, a Subway sandwich. And Wait, who, who the, does? the Subway sends you a sandwich. So um, <laughs> so. Um, Basically, you can order a subway on the internet, okay? And I have some supporters who, who do that. Oh. And in the special notes section, it says, please wait for the mendicant monk to, to 
come and ask for this. Don't make this right away. And so they, they save that ticket beside the register and they wait for me to come. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll be good. I'll have maybe um, three weeks at a time where I, I don't go to a subway, but I have like a little bit of a backup and uh, try to have the majority of my food. Uh, I rely on the kindness of others. And um, it, it takes a while. You have to stand in front of the house. You have to wait. Um, the Buddha says not too long, not too uh, short. So what I do is I spend um, the time doing the loving kindness meditation in front of each house. And that gives, them, gives the people in the house a little bit of time to sort of notice that a monk is standing outside. They don't even know I'm a monk, actually. They, they don't. They think that my bowl is a drum and that I'm trying to play drum music for money. They call it busking, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a British word. But um, so, uh, yeah, I stand in front of each house and I do this and I make a meditation out of it. I make it a loving kindness meditation. And uh, when I tried this in 2006, it was the first time I came to America. I had an arrangement at a, a supermarket as a backup so that I could collect my food uh, with, a, with a supermarket. Uh, they would have someone come and help me select my food. They would hand me the, they would, they would collect the food, they'd ring it up, and then they would put the food in my bowl. And uh, there are various uh, supermarkets. You can try to arrange things with them uh, to have that done. Now. The problem is that the more that you have set up uh, these uh, backup plants, the, you're always taken care of actually. No matter what happens, you're always taken care of and you gotta, you gotta trust that. And there, there are beggars on the street, you know, they openly drink you know, on the street and most of them, they're not famished, you know, they have they're getting food in their belly, okay? And uh, everybody, everybody gets fed one way or another, and you got to just trust in it. And so I've, I found that uh, when I had that arrangement at the supermarket, that uh, nobody gave whatsoever, although we didn't actually do this uh, for an extended period of time. We just did it for uh, one time for four weeks, five weeks, and then uh, actually it was only three weeks total. And then another time it was just for um, another three weeks, uh, two years later. So people that didn't really know what we were doing and we were in a uh, summer vacation uh, community in Connecticut and uh, like, a, like a, beach, a beach community. And we were there a little before season actually anyways. So it was, it was, it was difficult. When I came to Kauai, I had convinced this monk that we would, we would actually wait three days before we would try to make some type of uh, backup arrangement. And we would actually go without food for three days. And, and if I remember correctly, when you were a monk, didn't, didn't we fast together? Didn't we do a 10 day fast together? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, not really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we know we both know that you can go without food easily for three days okay so we had this determination that we would go for without food without any backup arrangement for three days before we would make up a backup arrangement and what happened was this uh, one lady sort of discovered us on the fourth day and uh, she ended up feeding us and she went into a supermarket and bought us uh, a bunch of food and then she was buying food for us, and then she um, uh, and she was meeting us on the street, and she wanted to come to where we lived, and we told her, "No, you should you should uh, find us on the street." And so she became one of our what we call drive-by donors, <laughs> and so she would have her her food. Uh, um, uh, first, it was this one lady named Melinda, and she was a a white woman. And uh, then there was another woman, uh, a Thai lady, and she also um, gave us food. And it was very nice. That was uh, three years ago. 
Um, neither of them actually came forward uh, this time. They're doing different things or busy. And so I have to rely on the houses. And, um, you know, one time there was a hurricane. <laughs> one time there was a hurricane. And I'm doing my thing where I, where I wish loving kindness in front of each house. And I'm, I'm out there with my umbrella. And I'm standing in front of one of the houses. And this lady says, what are you doing here? You know, blessing houses when you're when there's a hurricane going on. And um, it, it actually was a wash. It wasn't like a real hurricane anyways. But, um, but anyways, I was there during the, hur the, the hurricane day. And uh, she says, what are you doing there uh, during the hurricane? And I said, I was, you know, I usually joke around a little bit too much, you know, that's appropriate for a monk. But anyways, I said, I did the uh, the mailman's creed, you know, through rain, sleet, or snow, you know, we must do our duty. And and uh, and I said, if you know, I still got to eat, whether there's a hurricane or not. And if I don't go out, I'm not going to get any food. And she didn't know that I was collecting food. She just a lot of people thought, you know, that I'm I'm just there to bless houses, and that there's actually people who feed me behind the scenes or something like that. And so when that happened, she um, she started giving me food and she started to talk to me and she has really enjoyed um, me coming around the neighborhood. There's this one neighborhood and um, one particular street, maybe maybe 40% of the houses they actually give to me or they, I'm sorry, they've given to me uh, one time or another. The problem in America is that everyone's sort of huddled inside their house. They don't know what's going on. Right now, I'm inside a house, okay? I'm in one of the back rooms, and someone could be standing in front of my house, and I would never know it. The same thing is true with you right now in your house. Someone could be standing in front of your house, and you would never know it. This is one of the biggest obstacles. In Asia, uh, what happens is the houses are these 15, foot, 15 by 15 boxes okay these 15 by 15 foot boxes and uh and when a monk comes someone screams they said hey the monks come the monks come we need to feed him and and everybody can hear it because there's only one room in in each house it's just a bamboo it's a bamboo room or a concrete room or whatever and uh, i've gone for alms in myanmar and uh, i've gone in rich vi villages and i've gone in poor villages, and usually the poor villages work better. Not because um, the poor people are more interested um, to help or the, le the rich people are not in as interested, but it's that isolation factor. And so every house in America also has that isolation factor. The worst house in America is going to have you know, a few rooms, and they're going to have their internet connection, they're going to have a TV, and it's going to be facing the other direction. Uh, right. So, um, so it, it's a challenge, and, uh, um, but it's, it's very rewarding. As I've said before, uh, the less convenient, the less convenient it is for me to get my food, the more I'm able to propagate Buddhism the more I'm able to feel that I've actually done something worthwhile um, and meaningful and fulfilling for myself. And so that's, um, I feel that very strongly that uh, when I'm in the West and I'm out and about and collecting my food, I interact with a lot of people. Now all these people, they, they wave at me, they smile at me, and I'm, I'm the monk in the village. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's quite nice. And um, the question is, will it work or will it not work? And a better, a better question is, should we, still, should we still try? And should we trust that things will work out? And... I trust and, and it works out. I also have a little bit of a backup plan um, here and there. Um, 
another another way to get food is to stand in front of a supermarket. I learned this when I was in Amaravati. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Amaravati, we would stand in front of a, a supermarket, which actually borders a sidewalk. It's a little difficult with a lot of supermarkets because they actually own a shopping complex or they're part of a shopping complex. So you need permission from the shopping complex owner in order to stand outside there, plus, plus the manager of the store. So there's one place where I have permission to stand in front of that shopping complex. And, um, and the owners of that, of Qingyang village in Hanalei, uh, they, they let me do that and they're, they're Buddhists themselves. They follow Mahayana Buddhism and they've been to Thailand. And when I was explaining what I do, he was finishing my sentences. It was really cool. And uh, so I stand in front of, I stand in front of the, the supermarket called Big Save in Hanalei. I might go there tomorrow. And I just sort of, I just stand there with my bowl and I wait for people to approach me. And this is what we did in, in England as well. And they try to, sometimes they try to give you money and you refuse it. And then they say, well, what are you doing if you're not collecting money? And, uh, and so then it's, uh, it's very clear. I say, well, this is my food for my, my bowl. I don't eat after 12. And this is how I get my, my meal. And I haven't eaten anything yet, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and it might be 11 o'clock. And uh, actually, we can eat till like 12.45, 12.46, around this time of the year. And, uh, and so they, they either say, hey, that's nice. Jesus will provide for you and walk away. <laughs> or, or they'll go back into the store and they'll buy something or they'll pull out something from their bag. And, uh, and so that, uh, um, that's, that's one way. And so the owner of this, um, the owner of this, uh, this shopping complex, he says, look, if you ever get stuck, um, I have an arrangement for you at such and such place and just go there. And, uh, and you don't worry about it. And I've been here almost a year and I've used that arrangement once. And that was because I got there late. I, I got there like, like quarter after 11 or, or 1130. And I only had, uh, you know, I don't think I even had an hour to stand in front of there. If I have, if I have an hour and a half, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty secure. So, um, so it was only, only once in the past year have I done that. I don't go there every day, but, um, but, uh, you know, so I have some backup plan, but I trust in it. And when I trust in it, I, I don't use the backup plans as much as you would think. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. It's, I think most people who see this will feel like I do basically an admiration for you to do that because most people are either going to have some sort of fear, either of hunger or also of just standing there feeling like a beggar and uh, basically, I guess, facing their ego of, <laughs> yeah, being perceived as a beggar, I guess. I don't know. We have yeah, yeah. ideas of, oh, I'm a high, special, high class status person. I'm important. I don't beg. I just, this kind of thing. I don't know. Well, it's, it's well uh, you know, bhikkhu sort of means beggar, you know, uh, it means mendicant monk. And, um, but, you know, a beggar, a beggar, you know, sticks his hand out and he's uh, very assertive and he asks for things. But the monk, if he's proper, he won't ask for anything. If someone comes up to me and they say, hey, what are you doing? I tell them what I'm doing. If they don't say, hey, what are you doing? I just, uh, I just go along my merry way. And that's why a lot of people in the village thought I was just blessing the houses for 
playing your drum. You know, that was that, that was my that was or playing a drum or whatever. They they thought you know that's what I was doing. You know, they, a lot of them thought I was blessing houses. You know, some people they would just say thank you. I have my eyes closed and I'm wishing the four loving kindness phrase phrases and um, and afterwards you know sometimes they would uh, they would say thank you and I'd walk away and uh, I don't say do you know what I'm really doing and uh, uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> only so many houses I can bless before I get this <laughs> so, so uh, well I have a backup plan and I'm I'm doing loving kindness meditation uh, to protect myself to protect uh, protect my own mind because otherwise I'd be like I need that food I need that food or or this guy's a jerk because he doesn't give me any food you know so uh, you know if if you're practicing loving kindness and you're making a meditation out of it then um, it balances out your your mind and it it also protects you you know from from people and and once people know that you you haven't touched money you know you just say that you just say that phrase, I haven't touched money in 18 years. And any type of guard that they have when they start speaking to you, you know, not every time, but like 90% of the time, it just completely drops down. They're like, hey, that's so cool. That's amazing. And, uh, and then we start talking and then food comes. And uh, the one time, one time, <laughs> one time I, uh, uh, I wanted to try to get the Thai people, you know, a little more excited about what I was um, about, you know, getting them involved. And, and I heard that, you know, on Sundays they have time, but, uh, but on Thursdays when we usually meet, they don't have time. They have to work, you know. So I told a couple of people that, uh, that uh, I was going to go alms in, uh, in the Hui, this, the, the city of, of the island. And uh, I said, if they know, maybe they'll come. If they don't know, they won't come. And I can only tell this to my supporters. Uh, and there was, only, there was only like two people at that time where I could, who are connected with the Thai community that I can, I can say that. And sometimes they don't know that. And uh, anyways, what happened was um, my main supporter, whose house I was going to go on his road, he said, he says, I'm going to arrange food for you. And I said, you know, this, the whole purpose of this is to get the Thai community, the Thai community uh, excited. You, you can give me food, but I'm only going to take a small amount. I'm going to only take a pindapata amount. You know, that means lump of, pindapata means lump of food in the bowl. So I took one spoon of rice and curry, and he had this Thai lady cook him. He doesn't, he doesn't cook himself. He had some of the most delicious curries you know you could imagine but I only took a spoon one spoon of the one spoon of the curry one spoon of the rice and, and uh, another you know and then um, I think there was a another another curry and uh, it wasn't it wasn't nearly enough for me and so I had to get more food and no one showed up no one showed up whatsoever and so uh, so luckily I started at nine o'clock, okay? And I'm like, okay, well, I just keep going. And so I, I go through this whole street and this whole village and uh, I'm doing this village cult. It's not like I, you know, I was doing a village for a year and people started after like five months started coming out, which is what happened. I was doing this village cult. It was the first time I ever did that. And uh, so, uh, so I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm not, I'm not getting any food whatsoever. So then uh, there's a subway shop, you know, nearby. And I thought maybe I could stand in front of there for a little bit. So 15 minutes, I'm like, I'm losing faith. And I don't have an arrangement there. I guess I could call a friend and have an arrangement. But I had made a determination for that day. And I told my supporter, I said, if I don't get food, I'm not going to eat. So I couldn't ask for an arrangement. And uh, this, was a, this was really frightening to me because I have never gone hungry. I've never, I've always had enough food. I've been here for almost a year, okay? A few more weeks and it'll be a year. I've never gone hungry. I've always had 
enough food or more than enough food. And I didn't want to lose that streak, okay? And, uh, and because I made that determination only from alms food, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could just have someone, I could call a supporter. I have several supporters who know how to do Subway sandwiches. They have the app on their phone and everything. And, uh, and I didn't want to do that. It felt like I was cheating. It felt like I was being mm -hmm. dishonest. It's just since I told other people. So what to do? Walk down the streets and keep, <laughs> keep hoping. So I'm going, I'm going through more houses, more houses, more houses, more houses. And, um, and then, uh, then I see, um, uh, I go down another road and, uh, it's, uh, 10 to 12 at that time. I remember when this happened. You're running out of time. Yeah. At that time I could eat till like 1250 because, uh, Kauai is, is further West from Honolulu. So we have a little bit extra more, a little bit more time because we go by the solar noon by the astronomical settings. I have, a, I have an application on my phone that tells me <laughs> to the minute that I can eat. And, um, but still I was running out of time. I mean, cause I gotta get, not only do I have to get food, but I have to have time to eat it too. Right. Okay. So, um, so I'm going by this house and there's these two sort of local people there. And, um, and uh, you know, they, they see me and they, they come out and they say, you know, they have this curious look on their face and they say, um, can I help you? And uh, you're like, well, you're like some weirdo. What are you doing in front of my house? That's what they're saying. But because they asked, can I help you? Okay. Then I'm allowed to tell them how to help me. And uh, so I, I can, I can explain who I am, what I'm doing. And, uh, and see what happens. So, you know, I, I told them, you know, that I'm a Theravada Buddhist monk and I haven't touched money for, uh, for 18 years. I'm not looking for money or anything like that, but um, I, I'm standing in front of the house and I'm wishing loving kindness. And, uh, and this is my bowl and I'm looking for my meal and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't eat dinner and this is uh, what I, what I'm doing. And so they, they gave this like a uh, sort of compassionate look and, and they disappeared. They didn't even say anything, but I sort of felt like they might come back. They didn't tell me to go away. So I, I still hung out and there's some rustling inside and they come back and they have a, a bag of cookies. Okay. And they said, <laughs> and they said, uh, that's actually not so bad. Actually, <laughs> a lot of times I just get fruit. Uh, even from the regular donors. Uh, but uh, so they came out with a, like four or five biscuits uh, or, or cookies, like chocolate chip cookies they were, and uh, in, a, in a Ziploc bag. And they said, look, you know, we don't have any food in the house. Um, there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken down the, down the street. And um, is that okay? Can we get you that? Can we get you a meal there? And I said, I said sure, that's, that's fine. It, that'd be great. And they said, well, it'll take about 10 minutes. Can you, can you hang out? And I said, sure, I'll, I'll go to the other houses and, and see, you know, what happens and I'll be back in 10 minutes. And so I went around to the other houses and, uh, cause I eat a lot of food. I was thinking, you know, maybe they don't give me enough food. And, um, so I was just going around to the more houses and, and seeing what I could get. And then I came, came back and they were also coming back at the same time. And they got me, um, you know, a, a Kentucky Fried, a KFC. I think you call it KFC. Back in my days, they called it Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, uh, oh, wait, you're, you're from Kentucky, right? I'm in Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> you're in Kentucky. So they have lots of KFC where you are, huh? So, um, <laughs> so, uh, they, uh, I haven't had Kentucky Fried Chicken in, uh, I mean, I think I had it once or twice before I was 10 years old. I mean, it was, I was like a little kid again. It was, it was really cool. And they, they gave me this little box thing. It's got mashed potatoes, chicken, fried chicken, of course. And, um, 
and I don't know, maybe there was like a bun. There was a bun and and some other things. And then um, I gave them a blessing. And when I give a blessing, I don't like it to be some type of ritual. And so I explain what the blessing means. And I tell them that there's chattaro dhamma ayuwano sukambalang. And I say, chattaro means four. Dhamma is the same word as dharma. Most people have heard of that word. And I say that it means quality in this in this case, normally it means teaching. And then I say, there's long life, there's a, a good physical appearance, sukham means happiness, and balan means energy. Ayu means long life, wano means your physical appearance, sukham means happiness, and balan means energy. And so I said, can you see that this meal that you're giving me gives me these four qualities? And they say, yeah. And then I say, well, what comes around goes around, and you get these qualities back. And then they, they always smile. They always smile. And they say, oh, thank you. Thank you. And they're, they're thanking me now. And, uh, and then I, I um, say the, the blessing in the Pali language. It's, uh, so we say, you know, sabitio vajjantu sabdarogo vanasitu. So we, we do a little uh, chant and then it ends, chattaro dhamma ayuwano sukham balan. And usually people get really happy about that. They, they really like the whole, um, the whole procedure. And what's really nice is that I, I tell them something that's universal. No matter what religion they are, they believe that what comes around goes around. It's a universal law. And I tell them to always do things with loving kindness. This is my main message too, is that what comes around goes around. So always do things with loving kindness. Don't do anything with anger because that will come back to you too. And uh, so afterwards, um, afterwards, you know, chicken uh, thing is, uh, is good, but maybe not enough food. But uh, I was just grateful that I had more food. And, uh, and then they became really happy and they, they gave me this big thing of water. And then they gave me uh, this, <laughs> this whole big thing of, of nuts. I forget which maybe they were, ca- they were cashews, I think. Mm, nice. And uh, yeah, it was a huge bag of, <laughs> it was a huge bag of, nut- it was, tra- no, it was like a trail mix. Thing. It was a trail yeah. mix thing. Okay. And uh, you know, when people are like this, you remember exactly what they give you. It's really strange, you know? And uh, this was, this was two months ago. <laughs> and I'm telling you exactly what they gave me. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, it's when you need it the most and it's really touching for myself and it's really touching for them too because they really, they really helped me out. And, um, and so I went, I went off to, uh, I actually ate across the street from Kentucky Fried Chicken. There was a tree in the shade and I, I went and ate that and, um, uh, and I ate the, the whole bag of trail mix and I forgot to put the ranch dressing on my chicken, so I put the ranch dressing on my trail mix, uh, which was pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, at that, at that time, I'm just thinking calories, you know, so I'm like, I got to eat this ranch dressing. It's got calories, it's got oil. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm eating this, and, uh, uh, and, that was, and that was it. And I got, I got full from it. You know, I, I had my, my full meal from it. Yeah. And, uh, and I trust it. <laughs> and it's, it's really, uh, it was, it was really wonderful. And, uh, and then I, I took a picture of it and I sent it to my Thai uncle who just didn't, he, he was worried, you know, that I wasn't going to get any food. He had a whole meal of this delicious Thai food. And I, and I took just a small amount <laughs> and he was worried and I took a picture of all the stuff that I got. And uh, plus, you know, it wasn't just that. There was the four cookies, the four or five cookies that they gave me. Mm, and you got some dessert too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, whether it's good or not, you know, you just, you just want that calories and you want the, uh, you know, the energy from it. And that's how you, you think. And when you, when you trust in it, it works. And I finished eating, you know, with just like a few minutes to spare. It takes a long time to eat trail mix. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's the, nuts. A lot of the nuts slow you down. <laughs> the nuts, 
<laughs> the nuts really slow you down. You can't eat them that fast, you know, and uh, you can't swallow them whole. So you got to, you got to, you know, and time's running out. <laughs> right. So, so uh, anyways, uh, uh, you know, that's, um, that's what happens when you, when you trust in the, um, in the system. And, and sometimes you just have to do it. Cool. Yeah, I mean that's that's amazing. So let's let's. I mean, I hope that this video worked. Okay. 